Welcome to episode 70 of Crave the Book. In today's episode, Amber and I are covering chapters 115 through 117 of Tracy Wolf's Covet. And in this episode, Grace and Hudson and Flint and Remy and Calder finally go through the chamber while they are staying at the prison. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Episode 70, dun, 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 and it's a day late, dun, dun, dun. It, I, <laughs> we did the non-communication thing of both thinking that the other was too busy to do it yesterday, but actually we were both just sat around waiting for the other one to go, I'm not busy. <laughs> look, look, now listen here, you post on social media and make it look like you are very busy with puppies and traveling and uh, it it seemed like you were having a good old time and I didn't want to bug you with hey do you want to do the <laughs> podcast do you want to do it do you want some water do you want some water <laughs> so I, I wasn't and, and you know last week we told them like guys if if for any reason the episode doesn't air on Wednesday um, unless we have otherwise stated that we're taking a week off Wednesday, Thursday are going to be the the norms, just depending on what our schedules look like. So if the episode isn't available on Wednesday, it will be available on Thursday, unless, you know, Mm -hmm. something terrible happens, knock on wood. Um, But we are back in the prison. I see that you have some court spoilers. Um, So we'll go ahead and, you know, Give that little disclaimer that if you hear the howl, bounce out of the episode if you don't want court spoiled for you. You guys know how it works by now. Um, So last we left off, Remy had just said, like, the prison is going to make you go through whatever the worst thing that's ever happened to you is or the worst thing you've ever done you're going to have to relive that over and over and over again. And he's like, so what's the worst thing you all have ever done? (laughs) And I I thought it was funny. Like, obviously Hudson, you know, Grace is like, he's, he's thinking about his time before, you know, when, before Jackson killed him and Flint's thinking about when he tried to kill Grace and Grace is like, I'm thinking of that time that I couldn't convince Jackson not to do something. Like, it was just <laughs> yeah. the most yeah. mundane she's, thing. <laughs> she's the, the worst thing that she's ever done is just not being more assertive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's me. That's me. That's, that's me. All over. Like, oh, the worst thing I ever did was not doing something. <laughs> yeah. I didn't argue enough. <laughs> I didn't stand up for myself. I just said, okay. <laughs> So would she have to relive, <clears throat> would she have to relive watching Xavier die over and over again? Or would she have to relive that uncomfortable moment of sitting there where someone's like, you know, you say what you want. And then the other person's like, well, that's great. But no, we're going to do this. And you're just like, oh, OK. Except- See, I don't think that she would have ever gone into the chamber because she's a gargoyle. So therefore, magic doesn't really work on her. Does so it, I never really, I never really thought about what would happen. I mean, does it still not work on her? I don't know. Um, we we don't find out, do we? No. Um, but yeah, I I think that if she did get into the the chamber and was tortured, um, if everybody here has read court, I think we get our moment. Yeah. I think that's the worst thing she's ever did was to like not yeah not know who she was and kind of ignore who she was and pretend that she wasn't I yeah I I I don't know what would have I almost feel like I almost feel like Remy knew that she really hadn't done anything because he's the reason that she, you know, was able. He's the reason, guys. He's the he reason. Is, 
the raisin. <laughs> Remy the raisin. <laughs> Remy, <laughs> Remy the raisin. That is the name of the podcast episode. It is. Remy put it, the raisin. Put it in the comments so I don't forget <laughs> Remy the raisin. So he, Remy is the raisin that Grace didn't, um, you know, enter the chamber. He kept her out of it. But yeah, what would have happened if he hadn't done that? Like, and, and do you think that he could see what would have happened and therefore he spared her from it? Like, Maybe. she's gone through a lot of trauma, like her parents dying, Xavier dying, and everything like that. And it's all happened within a couple of weeks but, but also, none of that was her maybe fault. maybe the worst thing she ever did was while she was in her gargoyle with hudson and he's like no don't mess with time bro don't mess with time <laughs> i feel like, mess with time <laughs> like what if she like got into the chamber and then it started playing this sequence of events she's like this never happened yeah <laughs> what is <laughs> like this? when was when was this why is everything do purple <laughs> But like, I, I, maybe that would could also be the reason. But yeah, um, and like already, Grace is already trying to find a loophole where Hudson doesn't have to do the chamber because she's like, well, he won't cope with it. So, um, is there any way that Hudson doesn't have to do it? Yeah, what are the chances that the prison just lets us go? <laughs> He's like, oh, like zero, zero, none, zero. Um, I did have a question of like, do you think that the whole cell has to take part every time? Because he never said that they had to. I think that it's... Uh, he just is like, oh, yeah, like, you, it's like a, a roulette thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a assumed. Lucky dip. <laughs> and yeah. Remy clearly hasn't done anything all that bad. So he's in the prison just because he was born there, but he hasn't actually done anything to to be there. So maybe that's why he isn't affected right maybe they well they can't do anything to him was that did he did he say that that the that they can't do anything to him yeah uh, i mean what else can they take away from him that's true that's true he's already he's already locked up you know it's not like he's he hasn't done anything to deserve being there and there's not really any torture worse than being locked up for your whole life for nothing for nothing yeah for things for that being born <laughs> yeah like which makes me think about who he is because the only reason that you would punish someone for being born is because you are in denial that they ever were born oh like you... like i don't th i don't necessarily think that his mother did anything wrong and just the mother and then therefore Remy got the just the brunt of having to stay there because he was born there. I think that Cyrus threw her into the prison because of who he was. And he went, this is the only place that I can put you. So you never exist outside of the prison. Okay, so... Like, I'm thinking, like, bastard son kind yeah. of vibes. Um, or a threat to Cyrus. Because, I mean, a, a bastard son would be a threat to Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. But then Remy said that his father was a, a, a warlock, so I'm not really sure. Hmm. Well, well, well I'll, I'll, say, I'll say it when we're in spoilers. I'll mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, do you know what I mean? Where, like, I feel like... No, he, I, I agree. He is being... He's he's the one that was been thrown into the prison. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Um... Yeah. So we we learn a little bit more about the prison, about it. it's, you know, a big roulette table and they spin, which, to be perfectly honest, the first time that I read the book, I wasn't expecting it to be like a Gravitron. Right? <laughs> Vomitron. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just cling into the side of the walls. Um, and, the, and the way that I kind of ha imagined it is that, like, you know how you, you go to Starbucks or whatever and you get the certain little, like, number of coffee cups and then you get the free coffee cup? Yeah. I feel like this is, like, the loyalty scheme to the punch card. To <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have to go through several rounds of being tortured and then you get a free trip to the shopping mall. Yeah. Or to get your nail polish, apparently. Which I think, it, it, she's lying about that, right? What, about wanting nail polish? About nail polish. Yeah, like, 
she says it so nonchalantly as like a coping mechanism, kind of like a like oh yeah no definitely I'm I'm going to do all of this just for some nail polish because nail polish is really important. But I feel like she's been doing something else in the pit. Either that or she wants to sacrifice. You know, she's saying basically I have this thing that I want, and sh she's doing it to spare Remy to give him the opportunity to leave. You know, and she's just like, oh, well, you know, I, I was going to do it anyway because I needed nail polish when in reality she didn't act, need nail polish. It, it was more that she needed a reason so that Remy wouldn't feel so bad about her repeatedly going through it in order for them to both have a little bit of like downtime to leave their cell. Yeah. So I also did kind of have an idea of like, she's quite a. Uh, what's the word? Like, like she's she, she's very high self esteem. Vain. She likes the, her look of herself. She's very vain, but also when you're stuck in prison and you have ac no access to any of the things that would normally make you feel good, nail polish might have been the only thing that she could do to have some semblance of normality. Yeah, yeah, or in you know individuality. If you know they're all in prison jumpsuits and she's not able to like do anything for herself mm -hmm. and from what we understand the pit isn't exactly like an illegal activity kind of gambling ring where you trade cigarettes for things it sounds as though like there is like le le legitimate businesses that are selling things yeah so her wearing nail polish wouldn't really get her in trouble either like it is just a an expression of of personality maybe um, but I also thought that maybe the person who sold her the nail polish could have been really important. But then she never mentions them. Yeah. So, and even when they do get to the pit later, spoilers, um, she doesn't go and get more. So clearly it wasn't that important. I mean, have you ever... Escaping was way more. Have you ever, have you ever used a whole bottle of nail polish in your life? No. Uh, is that is that something anybody's ever done? No, but she might be wanting different colors. Well, how long has she been locked up? Long We're enough to different like she's got to go for her different outfits. <laughs> <laughs> different. It's like okay. It's like today's Monday is like a nice a bluer version of the jumpsuit that I'm wearing because I once dragged it in the dirt a little bit and it's got that like slate dust on it. So therefore, I need a blue tinged nail polish today. Oh, this one got a little bit of bleach spilled on it, so it's a little <laughs> splotchy. <laughs> yeah, they don't seem to have change of clothes either. No, I always there's there's like there's no like there is literally beds that retract into the walls and like shower cubicle kind of place and toilet. Yeah, I that's that, there's. That's one thing I always make it a, a point to like, like I've been working on my book and I keep having to remember, I'm like, change your clothes, change your clothes, take a shower, change your clothes. <laughs> Go to the toilet, change your clothes. <laughs> I don't, I don't write in, I don't write in going to the toilet because I feel there like. There is only one time I've ever read like somebody going to the toilet in a book. And it was actually, despite it being a very normal activity, it was really odd to read. <laughs> like, I was like, this is unnecessary. And I know that it's necessary in life, but this is really unnecessary. I don't want to read. Yeah, it's it's an implied, implied detail. But showering and stuff, it's showering is a good time to write in times of reflection, which is why, you know, later on in like the next chapter, Hudson showers and you know that he's going in there to to think. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So everybody's super paranoid, but they find out that okay, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna spin to win. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna play. Yeah. Um, and and then Fl and the Flint goes like, well, if that's that, that's all for a discussion. I'm gonna go to sleep. And I'm like, that is my husband in any stressful situation. He just goes, I'm going to sleep. My troubles away. I am in denial about his existence. And if I go to sleep, it goes away. Yeah, you can put yourself put it on standby. Mm -hmm. You know how like people comfort eat. I, I'm a comfort eater. Like if I'm in a stressful situation, I want to eat things like my weight in chocolate. 
or I want to go and have a bath so that I can remove one of my senses by putting my ears under the water or like that sort of thing. But Scott is a comfort sleeper. <laughs> He's like, I'm going, I'm going to go to bed. And I'm like, okay, see you in the morning. <laughs> well, yeah, because like, in the morning, everything, you know, everything could be feels different. smaller. Could be different. And uh, yeah, and speaking of um, stressful situations, Grace does have a panic attack and she suddenly realizes that all of her coping mechanisms have gone. Yeah. Like, she doesn't have things around the room to be able to focus on because it is the li- literally the barest room ever. She begins to take off her shoes and then realizes there's no carpet or anything for her to feel like tactile underneath her feet. Um, and then she's like, and, and then she can't even like count. She has no idea how long it has been in the prison. Like she has no concept of time there. Um, and all, all it takes is, is really her, her panicking, thinking, we're never going to get out of here. And uh, uh, luckily Hudson was there to kind of just hold her hand and goes like, he's he's like, he's okay, it's okay. And um, she apologizes for it. I mean, how many times have you apologized for a panic attack? I have. Um, like, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for what came over me. <laughs> Apparently I became hysterical. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I think And that... it was like, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, he said like, don't ever apologize for this. I put you into this. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's got to be really, really stressful to, I mean, obviously what Grace went through watching Hudson and Flint, you know, mm-hmm. literally being tortured was stressful. But it's also got to be stressful on Hudson's end to know that, okay, she's literally only here because she loves me. And, mm-hmm. you know. The alternative was too bad. Yeah, like. But she would have still been, like, in a comfortable bed with her friends, with her family, being cared for. She could still go to class. She would be sad and her finger would itch. But she would... And she would have a daily reminder of the flowers tattooed on her hand that would be the thing that would get him out of prison. Yeah, that would kind of suck. But he could have like, gotten the tattoos. why didn't Hudson take them? Yeah. Silly man. <laughs> He, he totally could have. And maybe, you know, maybe a lot of this could have been avoided and they could have just gotten out more quickly. And that way, if it didn't work, at least they didn't both die if, you know, mm-hmm. if it would have went badly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, I, I when I was reading, I, was, I just had a thought. The guards didn't tell them how the chamber worked. Like, Remy was the one that kind of explained how you, like, roll for that potential of landing into the chamber. You go to the chamber so many times, and then you get to go to the pit, and that's the way that you get to escape, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I was like, what would have, like, happened if you'd landed in a cell with somebody who was in complete denial about ever escaping? And they were like, just nope. And you just never, ever got that explained to you, that that was the way to, to get out. Oh, I thought that when I read your note, I thought you meant that you just didn't know anything was like coming. And then you just suddenly like the room starts shaking and you get clung to the wall. Like, oh my God. (laughs) That would be terrifying. But you had to opt in. Like Remy physically pressed the button on the wall. And I was thinking like, if you went into a cell with somebody who just refused to tell you how the situation worked or um refuse to do it like either you would accidentally press the button going what does this do and then land yourself in a torture with absolutely no concept of what was going on or you would just never get out because your cellmate wouldn't agree to it along with you i'd be pushing all the buttons (laughs) but also they they don't ever leave the cell apart like do they so maybe you would have that discussion with the person in like the yard or whatever. The yard, breaking rocks. How do we, how do we get out? <laughs> <laughs> we don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was just, it was a hell of an assumption on, on their part that they were going to work out how to get out. They could have landed with anybody and they could have been like, nope, we're not leaving. I don't want to go through torture, so you're not pressing that button. Yeah, and I wouldn't immediately assume if I was going to prison, I definitely would not assume assume that I would be in the same room as my partner or or anyone for that matter. No. You could like definitely be like, oh, 
um, you're getting uh, split into sexes or, or whatever. Right, or, or just a completely isolated. Imagine that. That would be absolute real sucky is that you choose to go with your mate to an everlasting prison and then you get separated. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, oh, dang it. Yeah. This is, it was just a thought process that I was like, oh, wow, that was really lucky that they ended up with Remy. Well done, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you engineered a situation where they got out. It, was, um, it had to be perfectly engineered. Uh, and then I was thinking, like, conjugal visits, like, well, like you don't need to do that. If you're, if you're with your mate, like, you're in a room, but you're also in a room with other people. <laughs> There's no privacy that maybe you'd have to shower eventually eventually you're gonna the wall the barriers of caring will melt away and i know that because um for example when i was pregnant you know at first you're all nervous and you know going to the doctor they're gonna they're gonna touch my hoo-hoo um and then by the end of it you're just like i don't give a fuck oh you want to invite like i had a whole medical class come in they're like oh do you mind if we uh have some this these apprentices come in and watch and i'm like i don't give a shit go ahead and our legs straight up in the air <laughs> everybody else has already seen it so i'll go ahead oh and then and then they wanted everybody to feel around and then you feel that do you feel that uh whatever something sack yeah i'm just laying there like okay <laughs> anyway yeah <laughs> yeah, you would, you would have to like like kind of like hide away into the the showers and stuff. But then, based on what they went through, uh, torture wise, that's not going to be anywhere near your mind, like brain. No, you're not. You're it's going. You're going to be like, nope. I mean, not nope. not right away, at least. No, but then if you never like wanted to go straight for the escape route, you could probably just chill out. You know, have some You'd fun get parties. Bored. I mean, that's what happened during lockdown, right? People got bored and had babies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, and then uh, Hudson and Grace, like, well, Grace manages to convince Hudson that she wants him to, like, sleep next to her. She's like, if this is my, like, last night of sanity, I want you here. Yeah, we're going to spoon. Um, and uh, Flint pipes up when he was supposed to be asleep. And he's like, hey, no biting unless I can watch. <laughs> When is that's never been Flint's like he's never been pervy in that way. Like it was just it was very I think he's he has been though, the comic relief. You think he was trying to defuse the situation? That's, that's me. Like that's me in any any given situation, like I'm the person that will say the most inappropriate yeah. sentence to just get a chuckle out of somebody when they're clearly traumatized. <laughs> Um, but also, it made me think that he probably does have a bit of a vampire biting fetish. <laughs> oh, he probably does if he's been attracted to Jackson and then Luca. Yeah, so, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. But Hudson kind of takes it as a little bit of a joke because he does have that, like, kind of, he growls but then chuckles at the end like a... Mm. That was funny, but I'm already having to save myself from Calder and I'm also having to save Grace from Remy. I don't need to be <laughs> perved on by you too. Um, but yeah, it just made me giggle. That it, it was just like the start of um, what Flint, because if you've read the rest of Covet, Flint really does start to be one of the funniest characters in in most scenes he's the comic relief he's the person that puts those like really sarcastic comments in uh he gets drunk starts singing that yeah like that's maintains through court too yeah and um this that 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 one moment of when he's like i don't actually care anymore i'm gonna be funny and it's the start of the rest of flint <laughs> well maybe it's because he's kind of um you know he's he's settled with a lot of things he's him and grace in uh when they go to the dragon court in the bonus chapter they go out and they you know sit and watch the sunrise and you know she really forgives him mm -hmm. so he's he's kind of settled on that and he's friends with hudson now so he's kind of forgiven hudson for the death of his brother and I think that he's made, you know, his peace with the idea of not being with Jackson. He's got Luca. He's made peace with his mom for the most part, you know, in terms of this is 
this is my new boyfriend. Like he's he's gotten all his ducks in a row and he's found a peaceful place. So I think that humor, you know, he feels like he's allowed to have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um. So the room starts shaking and Grace is like, earthquake! <laughs> <laughs> Which I lived in California like, for six years, and I didn't go through any earthquakes. I've never experienced one. It here's the thing: they happened, and it was like, "Oh, did you hear that there was an earthquake at three a.m.?" And it's like, "No, <laughs> was there?" No, the, the worst we get is, oh, "Did you hear that really loud thunder?" And I'm like, "No." Yeah, like the that's the worst weather we get. Like sometimes we get um, <laughs> earthquake. Is it weather? <laughs> And like and like and like any natural disasters, we right. don't really get. We'd get like a little bit of a flood, um, particularly in like parts of the UK, um, like specifically like Cornwall and places like where they're really narrow streets where they are at the bottom of dips and valleys. They tend to get really, really flooded. But touch wood, I have never been in a natural disaster of that kind of scale. Um, but yeah, like reading about them is always really strange. Like this, the blizzards and the cold snaps across places where like we were seeing like Canada, where if dogs peed, their urine would like freeze, freeze into a pop straight away. Like that's just beyond my scope of imagination. Like that doesn't make sense to me. Um, where people were putting their like pants out and they would freeze solidly and like into a rigid pose <laughs> and they were just posing clothes outside the house. That's just crazy to me. Hurricanes, tornadoes. Yeah, all you... Alligators. <laughs> Al- I, that's my least favorite type of weather. <laughs> Alligators. <laughs> Forget Sharknado. <laughs> Think Gator Cane. <laughs> I bet it's a movie already. I bet that there is Probably. A... <laughs> probably. Sharktopus and Gator Cane. <laughs> but, um... So the room's shaking, and they called her when she she's just like screaming to get the beds up that and remy saying that they overslept and um then the room starts spinning which i don't blame them they don't have an alarm clock or any concept of time yeah just just the lights on the walls um do you have to just keep peeking like waking up like is the light out yet yeah is the light out yet oh <laughs> uh, and that would be the worst way to wake up though wake up to spinning but that's like I think that's one of the methods of torture, isn't it? Not no, yeah, yeah. Having like no- lack of sleep, lack of food, and like the removal of the concept of time because you have no idea how long it has been. So that like when you have no concept of time, where there's no daylight and there's no nightfall, and then there's no like definitive times of day you really struggle to really believe that it has been only three hours. You could think that it's been days. Well, that makes this like a cakewalk for, for Hudson, you know, kind of, yeah. I, I won't go into the details cause it's kind of spoilery, but this, you know, this compared to some of the things that Hudson went through, it's, it's easy. Mm-hmm. And his girlfriend gets to be there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Until, until the torture takes place, which and there's a shopping trip. Oh. And a shopping trip. Yeah, they get to go gambling. <laughs> yeah. So Flint and Calder and Hudson, their eyes all roll back in their heads and they just fall to the ground. And that would be the moment that I would start freaking the hell out. Just saying. You, you would nope out of there. Yeah. That's mm. that's some horror movie shit. I don't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um and you know i almost would you be would you be thinking like what's wrong with me yes. why they didn't want me why like you would think me? that that's part of your torture is that i'm defective and therefore the chamber doesn't want me i'm so ruined <laughs> yeah i and we've talked about this in the past but really that would be a far worse form of torture yeah like because you're helpless there's literally nothing you can do however Mm -hmm. having remy there the way that he's just like you know he's like you know this is normal he kind of scoops everybody up puts them in their beds like that that would be the only thing like 
to hold you together, like knowing that, okay, this does have an end. Yeah. It does make me feel really sad that he does it so easily, which means that he must have done so many trips with Calder. Yeah. To the point where it no longer affects him. Because even if you were you, you were going through the routine, like if you've ever known somebody who goes through seizures yeah, or um, episodes like that where you can't help but have to just wait it out, you still can't do it in a, it's okay, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, it'll all be over in a couple of minutes, it's fine. We just sit there and wait. Like you still are quite somber about it. You still know that that person is struggling. Yeah. And for him to just be like, it's just another time that I've got to pick her up. Well, later her back in her bed. Later in the chapters, doesn't Grace like kind of go through that? Like, how can you just sit there? How can you just sit there? And then she realizes that he's reading a book, but the book is upside down. Yeah, he's he's not. He's he's doing it for her benefit. Yeah, he's not. He th- he is not that n- like. What's the word? He's aloof. he's not that less of aloof. Like he does really care. He just can't care so much that it affects him because they've gone through it so many times. Like, if you freaked out every time your significant other, your child, went through a seizure when they had a seizure disorder, you would stress yourself out and exhaust yourself. And also probably make the situation worse because you would preempt the seizure and make it even even worse. But if you take it calmly... And just know that there is no other way of getting out of it except just waiting. Yeah. It doesn't make the situation any better to sit through, but it does make everything a lot calmer. And watching somebody else go through that as well, if you're calm and it's the first time they've seen a seizure, it makes everyone feel a bit like, okay, I I, I am freaking out, but you are saying that this happens all the time and there is nothing to be concerned about. But you're also showing me what to do if I am alone, which he does do. He shows Grace that this is what happens and this is what we do and this is how long it lasts because we're probably going to be doing this a few times. Yeah. Um, and he's, he says that um, that he knew that holding her hand would mean that he could save her from the turmoil like save her from the, the torture and grace's first instinct is like, why couldn't you save him like why couldn't you have pulled, held his hand as if her pain would be less than hudson's or that she would rather go through the pain than send hudson through it and it's like remy is trying to explain to her he's like do you not think that i'd have tried to save calder every single time yeah um and then I think it, then she, it really does dawn on her that he's like, I don't want to choose to do this. Like, it just happens. I wonder why why Grace, though. Like, what... They... Well, I've, I've put the in the spoilers. Okay. But, um, yeah, like, I, I think that when I first read through it, I just assumed that it was because she's a gargoyle and magic doesn't affect her. And the hand-holding was just a placebo for him. That he dreamt that he held her hand... But that wasn't the reason why she was exempt. But the fact that he's also not exempt, maybe it's like a solidarity thing of holding her hands rather than a not a... A power thing. Yeah. Um, because like, just because you did something in the future doesn't necessarily mean that that was the cause of the thing that happened. It just might have been a coincidence. Yeah. Um, like when he said that, like, I know I take a flower. I just don't know whether you give one to me or I kill you for it. And he says, this is a matter of fact. <laughs> like, I think I understand the way that he's, he's, he's talking about the future. Because he's done it for 18 years of his life or however old he is through this prison. Is that he knows what happens in the future is certain. He just doesn't, he just doesn't know, know how, how he there. gets there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Um, but also, I feel like half of the time he's lying. He's like, yeah, I, I've already seen this. And I'm like, but did you? <laughs> or did you just want to hold her hand? It's a possibility. Because Grace didn't even notice that he was holding her hand until she saw Hudson go down and then ripped her hand out of his. Like, she hadn't even noticed. I would notice immediately. 
just saying. Yeah, like same, like like a strange man who you met like four, five hours ago. I don't know how long that again, time. You have no concept of time. Um a strange man who you're sharing a cell with that has kind of flirted with you in the past suddenly hold your hand. You would you would notice. Which makes me think some magical voodoo is is going down. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So um after after you know what he said an hour and a half Hudson wakes up and immediately says that he doesn't deserve to leave. Yeah. And that's kind of where we left off um or where we leave off. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and get into spoilers though because that's yeah, I think that this is where all the juicy details are going to go. Um, if you haven't read Court, bounce out because we're going to spoil it for you. Okay. Y- yes. You go ahead because I am going to tack on to onto your points. Okay. So the first first thing I was like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, there is absolutely no way, no way possible that we will get the chamber every night. And I'm like, <laughs> no, the <let's> sake. <laughs> Why, they, though? Like, I don't know. Because if anything... I feel like the prison wouldn't choose to let somebody have that possibility. Yeah, because it also means that they're going, like, I don't. <sighs> and it is random, apparently. It can't and be. And even the, even the person who is charge of the prison, um, Karen, whose name is actually, like, Fred or something really boring, um, do you remember him? The kid? The kid, yeah. The kid who's in charge of the prison. Like, if he was in charge of the prison, he would not allow them to get that far. Especially not on their first try. Is he in cahoots with Cyrus to the extent that maybe it's like Cyrus is like, you make you make their life a living hell? I don't know. But then the thing is that you, the worst thing that they could do is is give them hope and then remove it. So maybe... Making them believe that they could get the the pit on the first try is mean, but also maybe they didn't believe that they would get through six days of torture. I mean, what, realistically, what would happen? Would they just break mentally? Maybe, but there also could be the potential of like if if every cell <clears throat> got put into the 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 lucky dip, right? They had to opt in to push the button. What if it, they were the only cell that pressed the button consistently for six nights? They would be the only That's true. cell to go to the chamber. Um, so I, I also think that maybe something else is at play where someone is causing it to happen outside of it. Like, if this is Remy's genuinely the only chance that he has, he had to wait for Grace to turn up. He had to also take a flower from her. There was only a certain way. Like, he already knew to get her the tattoo and things like that. Like, everything had to happen in a specific time frame. Maybe in some point of his timeline, someone set the prison to pick that one cell six times. In order to in order to make it in order to increase the probability that their plan would work or in order to increase the probability that the plan wouldn't work because it could go both ways both yeah both could work yeah but it does make me amused that like it literally was like no that no, the what's the chances of the prison just letting us go in the first six days at zero what's the chance of getting the chamber every night absolutely nothing like no no chance in hell and that's exactly what happens well even grace starts talking about that she's like she's like this has to stop like you said that this would not happen every night yeah yeah it just it just make me wonder just like was someone orchestrating it or was it just absolute dumb luck because i mean that there's that expression isn't it they're like random can mean that there is the chance for every eventuality you could roll a dice six times and get six every single time that doesn't mean that you were super lucky that just meant that chances were the same every single time yeah um 
and the whole like if you get a million monkeys one of them eventually would write shakespeare's work maybe um <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe it's it's because there are so many people in that damn cell that their <laughs> cell is a little heavier maybe. and it's just tilting i'm thinking about like maybe it's like just physics but also out of the five of them two of them aren't even participating every night yeah is is the chamber unable to count it doesn't care it's just it's like you know what whatever mm. either way like it's very difficult to kind of picture what happens because they go for like that vomitron kind of thing and then there's a massive like drop Whoa. and then everybody just kind of tips over and kind of has a weird fainting episode and is that magic? Do they land in a place where there's like a bubble of magic that makes them have that? No one else has that spell or capability. But then that makes me think of uh, what's her name from Twilight? Pain. Lady. Jane. Um, Jane. Jane Payne. Pain Jane. Pain Jane. Um, it makes me think of like somebody who has powers like that. So you know how... Uh, Hudson has his powers, and Jackson has his powers, and uh, <coughs> Isadora has her powers. Maybe she's in control of the chamber. Possibly. Because what does she do with, with Grace? Like, I can't remember. But somehow Isadora is able to just basically torture her psychologically. And trap her in a loop. Which is what happens in the chamber yeah and i think that grace d doesn't she pull similarities to yeah it's like the um oh what are the the other two the the one the one in breaking dawn the one is afrina who can alter reality and perceptions mm. yeah and change the like the environment so it, which I, I don't think that that's exactly what's happening with the prison, because if that were the case, like, they would be up and, like, walking around and, like, going, like, their reality around them would just be distorting, but their bodily, like, actions would. Oh, I remember. Grace tends to stone taking Isadora with her. That's right. And then Hudson and Flint and everyone carries her because she's like a ton and a half or something stupid in stone. But whilst they're in there, it could be two minutes of time. But actually, in Gargoyle's time, it's timesed by however many. But Isadora is able to control the reality of what Grace is seeing. I vaguely remember. I can't. Here's the thing. We're almost done with Covet. And honestly, I'm looking forward to reading Court for the podcast because I. It's the only book I haven't read twice. Yeah, I really. Oh, no, Charm, I haven't read. Yes. Yeah. Yet. I really don't remember that much from Court. I mean, I, I remember it being brutal. Like, <laughs> there were times where I had to shut it and walk away. Yeah, there, I remember very, I did that more with Covet than I did with Court, but with Court, like, we had to read it so damn fast for the podcast that... And it was all the revelations, all, like, literally one after the other. Yeah, and it was like, they were happening minute by minute, and we'll be able to digest Yeah, and I was like, it. you don't have to tie all the loose ends together, Tracy, you can just tie one, and we'll be happy. Um, but yeah, I... I I think that Isadora is way more connected to this prison than thought. Now now I'm drawing parallels between her powers or whatever she did to Grace and her ability to literally floor her with the exact fear that Grace had. And it's also Cyrus's prison. Like, he owns that prison. Now, what happens to the prison, at, you know, after court does... We don't hear anything. I wonder, I wonder if like, does everybody go free? Does like what? Well, well, cause, um, uh, Remy stays behind cause he wants to blow the prison up. Oh, and he does get out, obviously. 
I mean, mm-hmm. but he doesn't say what happened. Maybe we'll get that in his spinoff. I, I want to, I'm very curious to see if Remy will use some of the, you know, the ideas from the prison in order to rehabilitate like kids. Uh, <laughs> Torture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Torture wins. Yeah, yeah. He does say that he's never, to date, he has never seen anybody be rehabilitated by torture. That's true. That's true. So maybe that'll be like, you know, he wants to have a positive like influence on these delinquents. Maybe that'll be like the. It- maybe he saved the children from the prison because he would have grown up there. So therefore, the people that he would know of would have been the people that were the same age as him. But then blew up the people that were. <laughs> blew up. I mean, like he's he saved everybody who was in juvenile hall, and and then. And then killed everybody else. I wonder if. I wonder if there are any kids like in the prison or. Well, obviously there are. Hudson and Grace and Flynn are, are basically. But if Remy does destroy the prison, like relatively soon after their escape, that would be the reason why Isadora is suddenly walking around. She's lost her job. She's lost her job. <laughs> <laughs> they took our jobs. Yeah, she's no longer chief torturer. <laughs> she's. I mean, I'm really intrigued to see whether I. Because I feel like you don't give a shit about my theory. You're just like you're just full of shit, Amber. But I'm really interested to see whether anybody else is like, hang on a minute, this would make sense. It's not. It's not that I don't that I don't believe it. It's that I cannot remember enough from court <laughs> to be yeah. able to yeah. like validate. You know what I mean? But I think that as yeah. as we read court, we'll be able to pick Confirm little... or deny. Yeah. Yeah. Just like we did when we were very sure we're like, Makai is going to betray them. Makai, I'm so positive because of all these reasons. And then it ended up not being Makai at all. But the T, we were correct about the T. Yes, we were correct about the T, about the magic gargoyle suppressing T. So, I mean, we have the potential to be the people that suggest the people, because we're probably the people that talk about the series the most. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we are. We have to be. We're the only people who have who have dissected. Consistently, had to, had, consistently had to fill an hour of time every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, absolutely. I, I've thought about that. I've thought, you know, is there anybody who is more, you know, who understands this series to the extent that we do, like, just because we've we have to you know have content and <laughs> <laughs> yeah guys we don't actually know what we're talking about no we just literally just throw stuff out the wall and see what sticks and then goes that theory could hold true that we, that could be true isn't that all what, isn't that what theories are like maybe <laughs> you gotta see but, if but they i feel hold like up. we're at this point we're conspiracy theorists who are like birds aren't real guys birds aren't real dragons lay eggs yeah have you do you have you watched the conspiracy theorists that have tried to like perpetuate the idea that birds aren't real they're actually all like yeah we have a whole organization in in the u.s called birds aren't real but it's just it's just so funny they rally that like it's like birds aren't real yeah yeah there's they they have like rallies and everything my favorite is when you go into the comments section of any posts by birds aren't real and there's all these people like you guys are stupid or like the when people cannot tell that something is satire is yeah is clearly a joke <laughs> and they get so mad and they want reasons and just how can you say i have a pet bird how can you say <laughs> that birds are real like okay anyway it's like they're surveilling you right no oh, you're just you're <laughs> they say they just answer back in something that argues their point even more <laughs> <laughs> love it that's that's us though dragons dragon yep. dragon shifters lay eggs yep. crab people and and heather is a wear crab crabs. which you know yep are we gonna get she still could be she could be we we she's still at the beach we, we don't <laughs> we haven't gotten answers and then they can just have dragon crab babies here's the thing i brought it up with tracy and all she said was wear crabs i love it so that didn't deny it. That didn't deny it. <laughs> we hear you, Tracy. Uh, and then my second point for spoilers was that I think that it was like demigod hand holding powers, maybe that like 
Remy knows that there's something about Grace that he shares. And if they're both demigods, she can channel his magic without really realizing as well because of her gargoyleness. Because even in the chamber, she's able to use the tattoo. Yeah. So it's not like she's so far removed from the gargoyle that she can't do gargoyly things like being a siphon. But yeah, it made me think that maybe it's because they're both demigods. That's what that's not that's confirmed, what guys. That's not confirmed. That is a theory. But I think that they're both demigods and she is able to channel his power and vice versa. And that's how they both stay out. But also if she is able to stay out anyway, the hand holding would just be kind of superfluous, like kind of pointless, but just kind of a bit of a coincidence that that's what he saw in his future sight thing. Yeah, I, the eye swirling is what's getting me. Mm hmm. But it's always green, isn't it? The blood letters eyes swirl like that, don't they? And they're green. Yes. Oh. But she cannot be his dad as much as she tries. <laughs> she she could try her eyes. That, that, that is not how biology works. But Jacon could be. And we know that Jacon and the blood letter are tight, so. Yeah. That's that's my theory. That is that is wh what I think. Um I think that he is it, 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 at least related in some way to all of these, you know, er, someone dealing with time, whether it be the god of time or, you know, just a, it, it, something, something. I wish that I wish that I could remember more of Court, but that'll make it more exciting when we actually read it. Um, it does also make me wonder because the the. <laughs> This is this is a chime spoiler, so drop out if you've not what like read charm. Go go okay. go go. Okay. So I'm also thinking that the time wizard saved his daughter, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know who she is. Correct. What if the time wizard's daughter was Chacon's wife slash mate? Oh, and then Remy is the he son is of. He is not supposed to exist. But he does. And this is after the timeline of events of Charm. So he's been locked away in the prison in order to kind of make him go away, make him not a problem anymore. Yeah. But his mom was locked up in the prison as well. But she died when he was five. But that's the actions have consequences thing. Is that just because it's a like it, it was like a butterfly effect of things, wasn't it? Is that just because you saved her now does not mean that you would save her later? Yeah, maybe she's in prison for messing with time. You don't mess with time, bro. You don't mess with time. I will mess with time. <laughs> I will mess with time. I will. But yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm kind of thinking that like she's. Other than the, the the Shadow Queen, which we don't really know much about, she's the only one that we kind of have unaccounted for. Yeah. Because we did kind of think that maybe uh, Remy was Macy's brother and that that was why Macy's mum was missing. But then we found her. Right. We found her. But then, yeah, the time wizard saved his daughter. Like, he went back in time specifically to save his daughter, but we don't know anything about her how he saved her, why she died, or whether she survived well, yeah. because he saved her. And and in last week's episode, I had that note from way, way, way earlier in Covet where Grace had basically, you know, said something to the effect of, like, they were doing their project on the butterfly effect and she specifically said way at the beginning of covet is it ethical to change something in time for the right reasons if you know that it will change other things later on maybe in a not so okay way yes and also the time wizard was a very very powerful man once he took all the dragony -ness 
Yeah. Once he can, right. he breathed the dragon fart in and he became yes powerful. So like Jakan could still be the father, but when the time wizard found that he had uh, saved his daughter and that he was now going to be a, dran- a granddad and stuff, but then they were going to go to prison, maybe that could be the magic that he gave to Remy. Because it's a different kind of magic altogether. Uh, because despite the fact that Remy feels like his powers have been like really damped down, he's still able to do like silly kind of theatrical kind of tricks with the swirly eyes and the clicky fingers. That's not a demigod thing. Hmm. And and that would give reason because, for Remy to know like more about Grace and be connected with her because Mm-hmm. She technically existed in in a, a bit of a timeline where she impacted and influenced. Yep. Because he said you did disappear for a bit then. But I we, we thought that that was when he she went to the Shadow Realm with Hudson. But that might have been because she was going to stop the Time Wizard from getting back to him. And then Remy wouldn't have existed. Oh, God. Time. Time. Remy is the raisin. Remy is the raisin. He's going to be raising some hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining like this like shriveled up prune like thing with a Cajun accent. <laughs> Haven't you seen the California, the California raisins? Yeah. The, with the little sunglasses? Yeah, the little sun. We have sun made. Yeah. They, we, they're the California raisins. They have like a little jazz band. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, we, we've got the New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans raisins, New Orleans, New Orleans raisins. I don't think New Orleans is known for their raisins. <laughs> <laughs> should we put raisins in gumbo? Please don't. No, <laughs> no one should ever put raisins in anything. Raisins are disgusting. Raisins are good in no. like uh, raisins are just embarrassed grapes. Raisins are good in like Indian dishes like korma. They're quite tasty. No, it's still put like. Would you put raisins on a pizza? No, but I have uh, had a grape and gorgonzola pizza, and it's pretty pretty grape and gorgonzola. Yeah, it's pretty pretty banging. <laughs> he still likes to make it up. No, it's good. We get it it's from a grape and gorgonzola. Grape and you just gorgonzola. pick the most two ridiculous ingredients of it. It's tasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I think that that's I think that that's gonna be it, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Um. Hopefully we get some more revelations as we get further into Covet. Now that we've read Charm, it's kind of easier to piece things together. Um, but Yeah, and tell me how much of a bullshit you think that we're, we're, we're saying, because if we don't have a, an echo chamber, well, it is an echo chamber if we don't have feedback. But um, yeah, post- you guys may have noticed things whilst you're reading through as well that we haven't. Um, so, for example, if you're reading through court again, you might be like at that point where you're like, no, this can't possibly be true because of this. Like, save us the trouble of analyzing it until we get to the court point par ourselves and then go, oh, we're dumb. <laughs> yeah. Or or just post in the Crave the Book podcast tea room on Facebook and be like, I know something you don't know, but I'm not going to. Hashtag tell. Remy the Raisin. Remy the ra- ha- Hashtag Remy the Raisin. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well um i think that's gonna cut it so we will see you next week bye bye